Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Raceway. Track and answer Shannon Sugardoll with you, with me, Anthony McDonald, the stable. Big day Sunday, hey? Yeah, huge day, huge day. Mother's Day open house. We'll get to more on that HBI play of the day. Let's get to that one right up into race number eight. We didn't pick a whole lot of the same ones on top, Anthony, but we do both like the one three accounts race number eight her two wins have come here in london uh, never been better than she is right now the rail advantage go time again it is a half mile track i can't imagine it wouldn't be a good time to go yeah right on hbi bet play of the day for anthony and myself three accounts in race number eight early pick three kicks off in race number one i'm going to key in against you here i know you got the rail horse all right you go ahead i really like this two ace 44 don the way it closed up last time out made up 10 lengths in the final half and uh showed a mile 59 and one so alfie with the two ace 44 don my pick three all hinging on that we're going to go four deep in race two to third race Looking at the four, five, and six in there to complete a pick three. Early pick four starts in the third using the same three. I went deep as the ball in race number four. You've got one in there, the two book. The bet looks all right. Yeah, she trained well the other day. I saw her on the track when I got to the when I got to the training center, and she looked really, really good. I mean, uh, there's some tough horses in there, but she's uh, she's no slouch herself. It's a wide open city of London, a limb for the girls in race number four. Two four in the fifth, three seven in the sixth to complete. Dapple Apple, a top selection for Anthony today. Race seven starts. A late pick four. Going to use the two and five to kick it off. One, three, five. Both is races eight and nine. There's a scratch in the tenth. The five. Uh, Stonebridge score comes out. So all button looks okay in there. A field of seven. Preferred three trotters to complete the pick four. We're going to take a short break right now. We'll come back with a whole lot more with Anthony. We're going to talk about the open house at the stable there on Sunday. And uh, one win away from 3,000, hey? Yeah, it's kind of, I think it's almost like you, you watch pot never boils or whatnot. I think uh, it feels like I've had this for I've, every time I go on the track the last month in London. It's always oh, three away. Two. I don't <laughs> think I'll ever get there. Well, you could get there tonight. You've got three shots. Races one, two, and four. We're coming back with a whole lot more. Stick around. HPIBet.com. Access, rewards, and more. Okay, we're back with the second part of our pregame show. You're watching Race Day. Guest driver Anthony McDonald with us today. I'm your tracking after Shannon Sugardoll. Wagering menu for tonight, setting up with a low 15% take on a pick three. Both pick fours, both high fives. The go-to wagers are the pick three play right up front. Always a $2,500 guaranteed pool. The pick fours begin in races three and seven. $5,000 guaranteed pools there. The high fives go the added distance of a mile and a 16th, races 6 and 10. So, Anthony McDonald, what is for the pregame? Coming into tonight, one driving win shy of 3,000 career victories. We'll see you in the bike for races 1, 2, and 4. We'll get to talking about that, but before we get to that, let's talk about the huge day at the Stable Open House. We've got some pictures stolen from the stable <laughs> facebook page you know what if you're not following the stable facebook page you should there's some lovely pictures there brother curtis setting up the drone for the open house sunday big yeah. crowd on the fence look at that i know we had we had a, i think over 400 people there and curtis always does a great job he's super professional kelly spencer played a, a real pivotal role as mm -hmm. always and uh you know my wife working tirelessly in the barn i mean i'd like to take credit amy and yeah, you know great amy kid. works hard and um, look at the, the this people there. This reminds me of Prince Edward Island in the summertime, yeah. the Matt Denae yeah. tracks, right? Yeah, that's exactly how it is and exactly how it feels. Exactly how it feels uh, at the Ollie, firm. looking for some airtime. Ollie. But we've got uh, pictures to show. We've got more pictures coming up here. Uh, it's going to be Mike Saftik on a pacer here. A uh, little bit about Buckingham. A nice, nice. Yeah, but she's a beautiful filly. Right. Uh, she doesn't wear any bo boots or poles or anything. Mm -hmm. and, and she's been training down really, really well. She's an Ontario sired filly. It was funny because uh, Jody was supposed to be there, but okay. you guys stole him from me on Mother's Day. We did, too. So we were going to go on the jog carts, but when I realized Jody wasn't going to be there and I wasn't going to be on the track, I said, oh, they're getting a wink on the race bikes now. It and looks the, great. The, the, would, guys, you know. the guys were speeding a little bit on Sunday, but the, the first bunch of sets were really, really good. This set actually went a mile and 2.5, come a half in a minute over the farm track, which is exceedingly good. 
Uh, all three, four of the Ohio, uh, Ontario Sired Phillies were really, really good uh, in that set, and I was really, really pleased with what I saw. Wonderful. Uh, Phil Hudon on board a trotter here in Bay Jewel, uh, another pitcher coming up here. These are horses that kind of caught my eye just yeah. from pictures only. Yeah. Uh, this is a nice. Well, that picture says, you know, it yeah. says a thousand words. This right. is a beautiful filly. She's mm -hmm. actually a Guccio filly. Okay. First, uh, first foal of a mare that made almost 400,000, took a mark of 54 or 55. Mm -hmm. she, she trots just like how she looks like she does in that picture. Beautiful. Beautiful gate. I said to Phil before you know, you know, it's tough too. When you're driving babies, you don't know what to expect, especially right. ones these young, this young. And I said to him before you know, I said, you're going to love this filly. And he had a big smile when he came in. He said, Jesus, a really nice filly. Have many of them been in the bike before that no, day? No, no. I probably only had four or five of them in the race bike. Right. They all went in the bike. We only had a couple that, that were uh, a little timid, a little leery, sure. uh, both from the crowds and from the race bike and just everything going on and, and the sheer speed. You know, it's the first time we showed them some, some fast quarters or fast halves. And uh, nice. they, all, they all transitioned well. I think we had 54 babies go and three made breaks. So That's really good. That's yeah. really good. You know yeah. what? Yeah. Another picture here. This is a big colt. I love oh, the yeah. name. This is Swandre the Giant. Mario name. on board. It's a fantastic name, but look at the size of him. He is a giant. He's just like how he looks like he is. He's another Indiana bred mm -hmm. by Swan for All, and Mario really, really likes him. Swans, after. They're, oh, they're yeah. huge down there. Yeah, yeah, no, they're huge. And, and uh, He's, he's a big boy, but he moves like a small horse. You know, for a horse his size, okay. to be able to, to train that fast over a half-mile track at this time in his career flawlessly without being on a line or needing a pole is really something else. And uh, he's a tremendous colt. And I bet he loved going in the bike. Oh, yes. Yeah, he likes, he likes to go fast. The one thing I said to Mario, don't, you know, just watch it because he, he can, like, he can dance along pretty good. Sure. And, uh, you know, and that's a good thing about having all these professionals out on the track is that they know what they're doing, they know what they're supposed to do, but more importantly, they know what they're not supposed to do. And yeah. uh, I was really lucky to have, you know, Mario, Sylvain, my brother James, uh, Mike Safdick, Doug McNair come out. Right on. Um, and, in the, and then some of our second trainers also went with some horses, and you know, the whole barn's professional. I love the fact that they brought their colors along. Uh, Sylvain yeah. Filion, this is the one that really caught my yeah. eye. This one appears to have lots to go. This is... Uh, West 52nd? Yeah, he's a my MVP Ohio sire trotting colt. Yeah, the he's stretching right out. He's right? a he's a big, big, powerful colt, mm -hmm. and um, he can get a little warm. But Sylvain said he was really quiet the other day, which I was happy to see. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when they get training down at this time, when you have some of these horses get by that last hurdle of just learning what to do and transition fast, mm -hmm. they almost get bored while the other ones are catching up. This horse was starting to get a little aggressive and a little hot, and I'd said to Sylvain. You know, just tell me what you think. He's a nice colt. He said he was quiet. He wasn't on a line. He was really, really good. Okay. He was really, really good, so I was really happy. Well, you couldn't have picked a better day for it. Uh, Mother's Day at the stable for their open house, and a large crowd here gathered at the end, members of the stable. You've got a great team behind you, hey? Yeah, I mean, people don't realize exactly how many people it takes. And as many mm -hmm. people as you see in that picture, there was at the least that many helping out, volunteering. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I missed a lot of people I could talk about, but... Man, oh man, you know, uh, it just, it takes a lot. It's nice to say, oh, I did this or I did that. I did very little the other day other than walk around and talk. Whether it was Bill O'Donnell or my father on the mic or Curtis on the drone or Kelly organized everything or all the people in the burn, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a great day for everybody. It I took think. a lot of people to make that work and it took the yeah. uh, weatherman to uh, cooperate oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, right? we were lucky that way. Alrighty, so it was a uh, huge success then. Amy and yourself, uh, both of you uh, got to be very proud. So uh, let's talk a bit about uh, the numbers. Yeah. 103 horses, 426 active race, horner, race horse owners. It's not completely accurate. No, not we completely? We added okay. 11 owners, so there's 437 now in 10 countries. Is that right? Eh? All over the world. 10 countries, You were yeah. telling me a couple of weeks ago, like Norway? Yeah, the last, the last uh, person we sold any horses to any shares of a horse to outside of Canada was a, a lady in Norway bought five shares of an Indiana bred trotter. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah. race fans watching tonight may be asking themselves, what's my first step in becoming an active owner with the stable? What it's simple, do? really. You know, the yeah. reason that we have so many owners is, mm -hmm. one, we keep it simple. Sure. And, one, we and two, we keep it affordable. Mm -hmm. And those are the two key ingredients, I think, to, to the, for this industry to move forward. And mm -hmm. it's the one thing, well, two things we've been missing for a long time. You know, the, the scariest part of becoming an owner, you think, is buying the horse, but it's right. not. It's the bills that are attributed to that afterwards. Being able to have something structured in front of you is really the key of everything. And the affordability, the entertainment, everything that's involved with that, when you don't have that added stress of what's my bill going to be every mm -hmm. month, it really changes everything. You bet. You bet. Okay, so you are very easy to reach, uh, very quick to respond. I know that firsthand uh, <laughs> message you yesterday about a guest appearance on today's show. Within seconds, and I kid you not... <laughs> <laughs> I got the reply, absolutely. So being approachable, uh, having great PR sp skills uh, certainly goes a long way in this business. Well, I'm a little shy, but <laughs> I'm, 
I'm catching on as I go. I'm, I'm catching on. You do it well. You do it well. All righty. Uh, great uh, setting up the action there at the stable for the open house of Mother's Day. A fantastic time had by all there. You've got the program. Yeah. You've had a look. I got to tell you, okay. first off, sure thing. Yep. I'm a horrible handicapper. So if, if any of you are saying, hey, you know, I don't really agree with sugar all the time. I'm going to have a fresh perspective. Maybe ask the guy beside you. I remember. I'm really a horrible. I know what you're going to say. I remember when you and Mark were in Summerside <laughs> and you were there. I know that too. Yeah, I yeah. was never a good gambler. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can remember your younger days around a CD play, CDP. You used to play, and uh, I'm sure you could still pick a winner. Uh, again, we didn't select a lot of the same horses on top today, but <laughs> we'll go through them right now for it's a Survivor Tuesday at the Raceway. Race number one. You like yourself in here, eh, on the rail? I do. You know, I, I told you before. Um, He's not a good horse, right? but he likes to try, and he, and he tries to be a better horse. And, mm -hmm. you know, as a driver and especially a trainer, there's nothing better than sitting man a horse that you know tries as hard as he can mm -hmm. every time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sold a couple of horses in Ohio that are much better than this horse today, just didn't want to put out. And this guy here, it's, it's tough finishing fourth and fifth in a maiden, dragging him right. down the highway, but I'll tell you what, he wants to do it, and if Alfie beats me, he's going to have to earn it, I can tell you that. Alrighty, uh, Bex Pride, Anthony McDonald chasing after that 3,000 career victory. He's got three shots today. He's right back in race number two. Another rail starter here in Art Seeker. Yeah, Art Seeker, you know, there's a colt that we had last year. He was in, in the program last year, mm -hmm. and uh, um, he fooled a lot of us. He fooled me. I really thought this was going to be a, a gold-type colt last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we qualified him. Ryan Holiday raced him for me a couple of times. He just didn't have good luck last year and didn't race that well last yeah. year. He raced much, much better his last five or six starts. I've been very happy with what I've seen with this colt. Still, obviously, not to the point where I wanted him to be, but uh, he shows some talent. He shows some pop. And if he stays, if he's close, he'll, he'll win. I mean, he's good enough. But he shows it right there. He likes to the race up close. Right? It's some kind of nice horse sitting outside me with Shep, though, in the six. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty good mile coming into London, I can right tell you on. that. Stormy Cash, Shepard there at a post six in the second. The third race, one you'll sit through. And uh, you're kind of liking this uh, four Fitbit luck. I don't blame it. Craig Gilmore, Colin Kelly combined. Yeah, I find it's easy if you just look at the top of the program and pick one of the ones <laughs> that you pick. It's easier to go through. I mean, that horse looks like it's obviously one of the better ones in there. Right on. Over into the fourth race. You're on the two book to bet. Kind of like your chances in there. You get an inside post. Scratch the four and five there so it gets a little easier, right? Yeah, I mean, she's an okay filly. The only thing there, she's a, she's a massive underachiever, you know. Sure, okay. She'll finish second all day long if you let her. And, uh... You know, if she can get up, if, if if she's forced to win, I know she will. But she does. It's she's like not the that. Best at it. It's like that for book the bet <laughs> in race number four today. Today's fifth race, uh, number two, DeLorean Sealster, first start of the season for that one. Well, I mean, you don't have to look any further than the qualifier. Right. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a firm believer of time not meaning a whole lot, but mm -hmm. I mean, when it's that kind of time, yeah, it, it half, does mean something. Back half is large <laughs> there. Over to the race uh, number six. Three Dapple Apple. Brett McDonald. I asked yeah. Brett before. Any relation to Anthony and Mar I don't think there is. is no, there? I mean, no. it's funny because, like, his grandfather and my father sure. grew up together, and all their families know one another, mm -hmm. and I'm sure some branches crossed paths at some point, but uh, Brett's a great kid, and uh, he, sure he helps is. us out at the stable, too. He's stabled at the same training center. Wonderful. And uh, I'd love to see him win with this mare. I, I drove her. This is how old I am. I remember driving her, I think, when she was two. Is that right, eh? And uh, she's always been the same. She's a lot like Book the Bed, actually. Book the Bed. Eight years ago, Dapple Apple was a two year old. He's seventh race, Lions somewhere. Feature race, it's the two Dublin Sealster, mm. Dale Fritz season debut. Yeah, I mean it's tough to you throw a blanket over a few of them in here. It's only yeah. a five horse field. Sure, you could say the five. You know, Bob and Scott mm -hmm, do a great mm -hmm. job. Uh, Dublin Sealster looked like a good qualifier, and um, I, I I want him. I think could be good to go. Yeah. Over to race number eight. Here's where we had the play of the day. Three accounts. We already talked about her. She's mm -hmm. two for two in London. Looks good to go again. Bob McClure on the rail. Over the ninth race, we're both liking this one. Dex the land. She does show a line over Sarnia there. Second and 58 there in the weekend. She could be good to go. Yeah, Sarnia's pretty fast track. It is, too. It's a 5.8. I think it's downhill the whole way. <laughs> race 10, your brother. Oh, Lord. James McDowell on board six. Willie or won't he? Willie? Or won't he? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, he's got the five hole now, if this is right. That's right. The five um, is scratched in race you know number what? 10. I raced against this Colt when he was two and three. He's a really nice Colt. And Bill Megan, Bill, Me Bill Megan does a great job with him. And I think that, uh, 
you know, obviously James is a great driver. If he can get there, he will. I, w I can't really give you any reasons not to bet him for sure. Right on. Okay, then. Uh, great job, Anthony, setting up today's action. Thanks so much for joining us in the no show. No problem, man. Thanks Shout for having me. Yeah, you bet. Shout outs. Uh, uh, you know, to all our clients, it was great. We had a great weekend. Mm -hmm. I felt bad. I, I was actually going to win my 3,000th race at Flamborough Sunday night. My horse was a maiden trotter. He was going to win the other night. He made a break halfway down the back stretch, and we had the grandstand loaded with people that, you know, this is one thing that people don't understand. You know, we mentioned all the people we have involved. Sure. Sunday at the open house, we had people represented from 11 states in the United States of America wow. on site, and even I was floored. I couldn't believe that. One guy said, uh, I knew he was from away, but I couldn't really place him. Mm -hmm. He said, my wife and I just flew in from Virginia this morning just for the open house. Isn't that awesome? It, it really is, and it says a lot about what the draw of the draw and the entertainment of, mm -hmm. uh, of horse racing. So for me, uh, to all our clients, you know, to all our potential clients and to the people that helped out on Sunday, thank you very much. And to Mark Treffy, who's out there wondering, I'm sure he's wondering how the butler did a jog today. He did good, Mark. He did, did very well. Good job, then. Let's go back and do some recapping. So pick three and pick four playing. I'm going to still key in on that two horse in the opener. Ace, 44, Don. Mm -hmm. You're good to go, Anthony. Ollie, Ava, enjoy your night, Kay. Pick three play right there. Early pick four starts in tonight's third race. Early pick four starting in race number three. There's my ticket. Late pick four starting in race number seven. You betcha. Late pick four kicks off in race number seven. We'll bring it up. We're going to go too deep in the opening leg. Hit the all button for race number 10. A reduced field of seven on the trot. Cameraman Trevor patiently standing by. What do you got for us, Trev? Race four. Number two, the cameraman comes to me before the show and he says, I think Anthony's best shot at getting 3,000 tonight is with two. Book the bet in race number four. Maybe book it for the cameraman in race number four tonight. Anthony McDonald on board. Alrighty, another edition of Survivor Tuesday. Always free to play. Online, on track. Two final chances to win your way into the Camelot Classic Grand Finale. You've got this week and next and then it's the Cam Luck Classic Grand Finale, Saturday, May 26. Closing boards. Everything needs on our website. Program selections, video, and more. Check it out at westernfairdistrict.com. Anthony's gone. I'm running at a time. Ten races, 6.15 Eastern. Good luck tonight.